Welcome to another episode of the CDA Institute's Expert Series. I'm your host, Josh Mall, and today we'll be speaking with Martin Rasser, who is a Senior Technology and National Security Program Fellow with the Center for a New American Security. Here's an excerpt of our discussion. We went over the geopolitical importance of semiconductors, Chinese-American tech competition, and the factors behind the semiconductor shortage of the past year. What is the geopolitical significance of semiconductors? Well, semiconductors are foundational to the, the current day economy, right? I mean, they, they truly are uh, the engines and the brains of so many, uh, so many critical infrastructure devices that we use, our, our military platforms. Almost everything we use on a daily basis uh, either has semiconductors in them or somehow depend on semiconductors in order to function properly. Um, so for that reason, uh, you know, semiconductors, you really can consider them to be even more valuable than oil uh, in the present day. And, and that's why there's so much uh, concern over the state of the global supply chain the fact that there are these shortages, uh, the fact that um, countries are, you know, that's ultimately the reason why uh, so many countries are trying to shore up their domestic capabilities uh, because they, they recognize the strategic value that they have. Um, and, and that strategic value is only going to increase uh, over the course of the next few decades. So we're seeing you know, the United States, Japan, South Korea, the European Union, and China, of course, all trying to boost domestic fabrication. They're allocating a lot of funds towards uh, next generation designs, um, looking for new materials to make semiconductors. Um, so there's, there's very much... Uh, it's, it's a gold rush, basically, right? If, you, if you're if you in the semiconductor industry right now, it's the hot area in, in technology. How has the disruption in the production of semiconductors impacted global supply chains? That the current shortage that we're dealing with is really just a preview, right, of what a large-scale disruption could really mean. So imagine, for example, uh, Taiwan in particular, just because... Uh, advanced semiconductor fabrication is heavily concentrated uh, on on what is ultimately a small island. Um, if that capacity goes away, then you start having to make some very difficult trade-offs between the semiconductors you do have access to then, where do you use them? Um, so imagine, uh, you know, do you start uh, prioritizing military systems, what's the economic impact of that, um, particularly for consumer-driven economies, uh, that, that has tremendous second and third order effects. Another issue with the, uh, the global supply chain, of course, is um, the fact that it's so interlinked, right? There's no, no one country that has all the pieces of the puzzle. And so uh, even if fabrication capacity um, is fine. There's a, a company in the Netherlands called ASML. They're the only producer of the specific type of machine that you need to make the highest end semiconductors. It's a, a, they developed a technology called extreme ultraviolet lithography uh, that is used to make these chips. Imagine something catastrophic happening to that country. Then all of a sudden you're capability to buy new equipment or maintain uh, and repair the existing equipment could go away overnight. And, and that then poses a whole bunch of problems as well. Um, and then a lot of the, uh, the design uh, capabilities, you know, that's where the United States in particular is very strong. Again, here, a loss of capability there has tremendous ripple effects throughout the entire ecosystem. 